Welcome back everybody and it's time of the video and uh, this is my latest project. I've been 3D printing and designing these for the past couple weeks and maybe it's been more like a month. And what I've been trying to do is make a new replacement D-pad for the Super Nintendo controller that actually works better than the original. And I think a lot of you will say, why would you do that? The Super Nintendo D-pad is awesome. And I'm going to challenge that a little bit. I mean, it's perfectly fine. It works. But a few things that it has going on with it that prevent it from getting that perfect diagonal. Like, if you like playing games like Street Fighter 2, um, hitting diagonals, there's actually a bias against it. So it's not like you can't press a diagonal. It's just harder to press a diagonal than it is to press a cardinal direction, meaning, you know, up, down, left, or right. And um, other controllers don't have that issue. Um, in particular, this is probably my favorite uh, controller on a, anything. And this is the Neo Geo Pocket Color. And if you hear this, hear that clicking? This literally has a stick with micro, micro switches. And so you can press those diagonal directions really, really well. It's, it's a dream. You can see there, it's more like a joystick. It's literally just a joystick inside. It's uh, just a real short, stubby joystick. So if you like that arcade feel, you can't really get better than this. Um, playing fighting games on Neo Geo po Pocket Color is just awesome. It feels great. I mean, I think I could still improve it. Like you see here that the actual part that you touch, um, that could be a little bit, have a little bit more grip to it, but it's still fine. It works great. Um, my um, GP32 has a similar stick on it. This is still the better one of them. And my GP32 is a part right now because it doesn't work. It just stopped working one day. Anyway, so this is like the gold standard. And I think like, I mean, the real gold standard is have an arcade stick, obviously. But the gold standard of control pads, um, you can't get better than this. Well, out there, what exists right now, there's nothing better than this particular uh, stick. That's my opinion. Doesn't mean it's that. It's not, may not be yours. So for years, I was actually thinking like, oh, this is a similar kind of thing. This is out of a Dreamcast um, gun, light gun. And it's got micro switches in it. And it's a similar setup. It's different. It's, it's a little stiffer. But I made a little... Um, board to attach it to so I could test it out in different games and stuff and it, it's it's still pretty good I think this this could definitely be improved as well so at some point I'd like to work and make a pad that uses micro switches and something you know like the Neo Geo Pocket Color um, the Neo CD controllers are similar but the problem with those is they just break um, they come up they come apart so I have one um, and it's 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 good it's not as good as the Pocket Colors but it's still very good. So anyway, back to the Super Nintendo controller. So here's the original D-pad right here. And you see that there's this circular disc around it. And that actually causes some of the interference with pressing directions. So in the, some of the revisions that I did, I took away part of that. So this is a very similar design. It's taller, which gives you a little bit more leverage. Um, and you'll see that I've cut out the areas where diagonals are. And this one has a ball bearing for the pivot point. And uh, right now I'm not using a ball bearing. It's good, but I think it may complicates the design a little bit. I may come back to this, but I've got something that works really well right now. And just to show you, I had quite a few revisions. This is not all of them. I printed quite a few copies. I got to this, and this is, seems to be probably the, the best design. It's almost like an upside down Super Nintendo controller because you've got the disc on the top. And what that does is when you're playing the game, you can actually press a diagonal. You don't have a gap in the hole, a hole in the directional pad. We still have the directional pad shape. So this is a little bit more like a Saturn pad, although it's still not a Saturn pad, which is, has a different internal design, but it's kind of similar in the way it works. We're still using membranes for the um, contacts. And uh, here are, so here's the differences. This is the, these are two of the final versions. They're slightly different. Um, one of the things I did here, this one has a slight taper to the, to the, uh, the cross pad here. And that cuts out some of the interference as well. We just don't want it touching the edges. You still want it to hold it in place. So that's important to have. Um, and then the same thing here is this version has a taper or a bevel on this interior part here. So that, um, it doesn't touch here. So so this version here didn't touch, but it was way taller. And I wanted to get it a little bit shorter. I didn't want it too tall. And then this version here was too short in that it was touching 
this part here was touching the edge of the, the face of the of the gamepad. So this one is like, this is ideal. This one has a little bit of a different bevel to it here. Oh no, wait, this is the more beveled one. <laughs> this is the more beveled. You can see here there's a more of a gap there. But I was worried about torsional, you know, like it rotating and stuff, and it doesn't seem to rotate at all. So we're good with that. So I think that this design, this has more of a bevel on the here. Uh, get the camera out here. This is more beveled on this version. And this has got a bevel, but it's it's like only goes halfway. Both of them seem to work just fine. I do. I think there's still a little bit of interference here. So I could go still in between, but it's not a huge difference. So here's some prints that I've done as well. So I'm at that point now where there's a few things I need to test. One is I'm using replacement membranes in these. So these are like blue Chinese cheap knockoff ones that I got at the local game store. Like here's the original Super Nintendo membrane right here. And it has a little bit more of a spring to it. But this one doesn't work very well. Some of the directions just don't work. And I've tried doing all the tricks to it and um, but it, it doesn't seem to, uh, it just won't press some direction, so. Um, but what you'll notice here, there's a couple things, is you have these little circle cutouts here on each of the directions, and that actually rests on the membrane and holds it in place. It keeps it from rotating, that's important. Um, the other thing is that when you press down, the ball prevents you from pressing um, any, pressing all the directions at once. And this one, this one has a ball that's a little bit on the shorter side. Now, what I was trying to do is kind of come up with something a little bit in between other, oh, where is it? Well, I was looking for an NES uh, D-pad, but this is a Virtual Boy one. This has a slightly higher ball, and it's true with a bunch of other games as well, systems as well. The ball is a little bit taller, so if you look here, this is a newer version. This has a taller ball on it, um, although it sits lower because it doesn't have the face on it. But so that's this is the newest design that I have, and I'm printing it in two pieces. So if this side here goes on like that, right? And I can't see this one here. It doesn't even click down, and I think that's the improvement that I was looking for. So you don't actually pre depress any directions. See, like when you press on it in the center, no direction is pushed down at all until you actually press a direction. And that seems to be the big difference. This helps a lot in games. And then, um, you know, obviously one of these discs goes on top and uh, like that. And then you end up with like the end result, which is a taller leverage, which gives you a little bit more ease at pressing diagonals. And you can see here the diagonal getting pressed right there. So again, I need better membranes. So I'm going to order from three different vendors online and just figure out which one is the best. And then I'm going to uh, look for some people to be testing this out and get some feedback. I'm looking for people who play Street Fighter 2 a lot, or like to play Street Fighter 2 a lot, and they like to use a D-pad. So, and I'm looking for people who really prefer this. They like this a lot. And I want you to try it out, try this out, tell me what you think about it. I will send you the new d-pad and a membrane to go with it that's my plan for my testers and i really want to have some good testers for this i'm not going to send this out to everybody because uh at some point i might be selling these um i thought about just giving the designs out but i think this is one where it's so important that you print it correctly um that there's so many factors involved that if you don't print it correctly it's not going to work right it's just not so um, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'll be charging a heck of a lot for them. It's just gonna, it still is kind of like a premium uh, product in a way, so I gotta make it worth my while, but I'm not gonna charge a, a fortune for it. But what the plan is, is that I will sell you one of these and a, a, new, mem a new set of membranes for your controllers. You need, still gonna need your Super Nintendo controller. So that's my plan, and uh, yeah, so I'm just looking for some people to do some testing. Um, yeah. So that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will have some more videos. Um, I'm still working on the shock boxes for other consoles. I got quite a few made. I just haven't done a video on it because I want to finish up the initial set of shock boxes for all the systems that I've planned on doing it for. 
which is I just have a Game Boy Advance left to go. So that's it. I have Virtual Boy, um, Super Nintendo, uh, Nintendo, uh, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of them. And the N64, Super Nintendo, like I said before. So yeah, so uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, any input or feedback you want to give me is great. Um, I'm looking for people who, when I'm looking for the person to, to be a tester for this, I'm looking for someone to play Street Fighter, but also may is maybe have tried some of these things out. But I, I want to, I want a good evaluation of this product. So yeah, so just let me know in the comments and uh, kind of let me know what your experience is. I might go with people I know first um, that I personally know because I know how much they play Street Fighter. Uh, so that's it, guys. See ya.